Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to IGTV. We have uh, with us today security researcher and uh, OWASP leader, uh, Tom Brennan. And Tom's going to get into uh, the HTTP uh, post tool. All right, and Tom, why don't you get into the, uh, into the technical aspect of what's going on here in this release? Sure, sure. Thanks, Jim. So a little bit of background. So um, about seven months ago, uh, I had worked with some uh, some clients on reference to some denial of service activity that was taking place. Uh, these are both large commercial uh, online uh, entertainment type organizations, uh, as well as financial services type companies that are in the critical infrastructure space. What they were seeing was a new attack vector that wasn't seen before, uh, which was a new denial of service. Uh, what we had observed was in previous years, layer four was being attacked by you know thousands of machines that had malicious malware or infected using a botnet, and these machines would you know, open connections or flood connections to a particular host, thus causing a denial of service. Now, an attacker has to have capability in order to make this happen. So first, he has to have the skill set to harvest the, bar the botnet and control the botnet. He has to obviously be able to control what it does and how it operates, and it becomes kind of um, dangerous, if you will, for the attacker or the criminal, because he can potentially get caught a lot at, a lot faster because he's, he's running a much bigger system. But what we saw in this particular instance was systems that were being attacked, systems that were being uh, causing a denial of service, but they weren't using the same sort of attack technique of layer four. Uh, what they were using was a new attack technique using layer seven. Um, and some may, may remember this initial attack layer, uh, layer, uh, layer seven, introduced by Robert Hansen or Arsenic, uh, which was exposed uh, and discussed. It was known as Slow Laris. He developed a tool. Uh, it was based on some uh, information that was released to him back in 2007. Um, and what Solaris did was a tool that would go ahead and make a connection to a web server, uh, and it would not complete the request. Um, it would actually open up a, a header connection on the request between the client and the server causing a connection to stay open, uh, thus creating lots of connections and creating a denial of service. Now, the interesting part about that uh, research that Robert Hansen did was that the, uh, the, the uh, research only affected Apache, so it didn't affect the Microsoft IIS server, so only half of the, the systems actually available uh, uh, were affected by this. Does that make sense, Jim? Yeah, that's, that makes sense so far, yeah. So, so what, we, what we found after that was you know, a little additional research on this particular attack factor. Uh, we started to look at ways of uh, extending the, the capability of this particular uh, vector, meaning layer seven HTTP attack. So what we had looked at was both the IIS server as well as the Apache server and tried to understand some of the nuances about the server after you connect to the box. Meaning if you connect to the server, um, there's a connection timeout setting. So as an example, Apache by default is 300 seconds, so five minutes. So example of I come to the machine or I come to, um, let's say, uh, well, I'll use the human analogy, I come to the TSA line as I'm checking through the airport, uh, and instead of walking through quickly and taking off all my jewelry and going through the, the metal detectors, I go through very, very slowly, where I start off, I, I make a big deal out of it, I get, you know, I, 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 I claim harassment, and I just hold up the entire line. But it's going to take about five minutes before the server drops that connection and does a reset. Now, the servers on by default can hold up to 20,000 connections. This is by default, um, and most machines are never uh, adjusted for that. And a matter of fact, they're actually typically adjusted down to be 5,000, 10,000, and then scale with clusters. The, the point of it is, is that um, what we found was that with this attack factor is that I was able to connect two web servers, open up my connection, and then I was able to tell the server, hey, here comes some information. Now, the server would receive up to two gigabytes of information on what's known as a form post field, where I actually post data in a form field. Think of it as a, as a login field in, let's say, email. Think of it as a login field on any website, like a form or a feedback form, like on the InfraGuard website. You know, there's some website that takes data from a consumer or from the visitor, right? So anytime you can post data to the website, what I would do is I would connect to the web server. I would say, hey, web server, I'm over here. I'd open up a connection. And then I'd say, hey, I'm going to send some data to this post form. I'm going to upload the information to the form. And the web server would say, okay, great. You have 300 seconds, and you can give me up to two gigabytes of data. So please begin your transmission. Well, what I would do at that point is I would spawn multiple connections. I'd spawn 20,000 connections to the server from one machine. And what that would allow me to do is basically quickly overload the server and cause it to no longer accept additional connections. I call it the ex-wife technique, where pretty much, you know, she would uh, exhaust your connections and not allow you to connect to any other any other machine. There's another story behind that. I won't get into it. 
Um, but the point of it is, is that this technique is very lethal because it affects both IIS and Apache, and we started to see it being used in the wild. So to, to give credit to the initial researcher, I was over in uh, China uh, with uh, Wang Qi uh, at the OWASH China Conference, uh, and he had experienced some similar activities in his region of the world. Uh, and after collaboration, uh, I, I asked him if he would come to the United States uh, to the OWASP DC conference, which is in Washington DC, obviously, on November 11th, and present his research with me, and we can provide this information to inform critical infrastructure and ensure people were aware of what was going on. Now, prior to that uh, alert or uh, advisory, what we did is we contacted the IETF, we contacted Microsoft and Apache and a bunch of other organizations that are responsible for disclosure, trying to explain to them what we found and where the problem is. Um, what was determined by the product vendors was that this was a protocol flaw, and it was actually by design. So by design, this problem is there, um, so which means this is, there's no fix to the problem. So by having no fix to the problem, it's a very real issue. Now, again, if, if the attacker capability to get a botnet is difficult and hard and it takes a bit of time to, let's say, bring down the largest bank in the world, well, that's one type of attacker. However, if the attacker has the ability to do this himself from a single machine and create the uh, denial of service to disrupt you know, commerce or, let's say, WikiLeaks that pro people have probably been hearing about a lot in the news, um, a very effective way to bring down web servers and deny service to people that are actually looking for the data. So, um, after I released this research on November 11th, I started to see a very large rise in attacks, both on websites that are you know, hitting the news every day, as well as in the commercial space. And I was continually requested for more information. Now, during the, the November 11th disclosure, we did release code, but the code was very rudimentary and pretty much described the issue as kind of a proof of concept, and people were obviously, obviously using it. Um, but I wanted to really make the issue uh, more aware. So what I did was I, I, I wrote uh, a tool, uh, and we open sourced the tool, so it's free, and we made it through the Open Web Application Security Project so people can go ahead and get a copy of the tool and be able to test their environment to confirm their own risks. Now, some might argue that there's mitigating controls in place like web application firewalls or other uh, denial of service type systems, but I can assure you, uh, as of today, uh, there's no known defense of this problem. Um, one of the progressive organizations, uh, Trustwave, uh, has created some, uh, some advancements in the mod security open source web application firewall but again, there's still some issues with that particular implementation. Um, so I encourage people to take a look at the tool, uh, test it out on their own systems, and just really understand you know, what their own personal risk is and how they can potentially mitigate. It's best to be proactive, I think, than to be reactive. You know, Tom, I, I appreciate this. Uh, it's a good update, especially on something, uh, you know, we hear a lot about uh, a lot of FUD out there, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, but here you've identified a, uh, an aspect uh, within the design of, I guess, uh, the software in, in some of the server applications, whether it be Apache or Microsoft. Uh, that's, that's an interesting area, all right? Uh, by design is interesting. That, that's very, very interesting. If you could do me a favor on, you know, when you have time, uh, before I, uh, I get into this, because uh, my next caller is already at my heels here. Um, if you could send me just a short paragraph, I'll put that up with your video uh, up on our blog. I'll try and get that up later today. Okay, great. All so right. if anyone's interested in getting a copy of the tool, you can go to the OWASP.org website and click on projects. There's 118 projects, but this is one of the newer projects, so you'll find it online under the OWASP HTTP post tool. And again, guys, be careful. It's a dangerous sort of tool. Uh, you know, doing this against unauthorized websites is a crime. Thank you, Tom.